Hi everyone, Happy New Year! Wish you all a happy, healthy, and wealthy Tiger Year. Again, I show up here to review our new product. This DSP induction furnace. This furnace applies DSP power, which is patented by our company. DSP means digital single processor. Compared to the old type furnace, this DSP furnace has following advantages. Firstly, the old furnace is 40k Hz and this DSP furnace is 20k Hz. The lower Hertz it is, the more thorough and uniform the melting will be. Because the lower hurting hurts, the heating starts from the center to outside, so the melting of metal will be more thorough and uniform. Secondly, the older furnace without water flow control, and this furnace with water flow control, and it can show maximum water flow 275 liter per minute. And if and when the water flow is lower than 100 liter per minute, the furnace will stop heating for protection. Thirdly, the old furnace uses analog power, and this DSP furnace uses DSP power with, with the chip sense function. So, no matter how many metals you put inside the crucible, the heating power output maintains at the same level. And the fourth one, compared to all type of furnace, this DSP furnace has advantage of the lower heating loads. If you put the same power input, DSP furnace can get the higher heating output. That means it is energy saving, electricity saving, and finally saving your cost. The fifth one, the old furnace heats the metal through graphite crucible, and this DSP furnace with stronger electromagnetic stirring function, it heats the metal directly, not from the light through the graphite crucible. So the crucible oxidation rate or speed is lower, so you can use the crucible more times. The sixth one, the old furnace uses cement plate, top plate, and this DSP furnace applies the micro top plate, which is more durable and not easy to get broken. The seventh one, but not the last one. For the DSP furnace, we add one extra ceramic flange, which is used for heating insulation. So, the top plate won't get too hot if the furnace is heating. Well, till now we have understood the main advantages of this DSP induction furnace. Now we need to demonstrate you how to operate this machine. Okay, so please follow me. Before start the machine, uh, we need to prepare the necessary materials and consumables uh, for to start the machine. Let me uh, introduce you the necessary parts and the consumables we have to prepare. Firstly, we need to prepare the ceramic shield. And we need to prepare graphite crucible. Also, this is stirring rod and the melting metal. Also, the crucible tongue used to uh, pick up the crucible and the glove for safety uh, pro operation and the graphite ingot, also the ceramic plate. Now we have prepared all the necessary parts used for heating process. Now we need to connect this DSP furnace to our water chiller. Okay, let's get back to the furnace and chiller. Collection of DSP furnace and chiller is very easy. As you can see, only two pipes. The water outlet from water chiller goes to the to the inlet of DSP furnace. And the water outlet from 
DSP furnace goes to the inlet of water chiller. So only two pipes, outlet to inlet and inlet to outlet. Remember, very easy. Inlet to outlet, outlet to inlet, that's it. Uh, well, once we are sure the good connection of, between the water chiller and DSP furnace, now we can uh, switch on the main power. So our engineer switch on, switch on the main power. Okay, now when we switch on the power supply, we can see the screen of the water chiller displays the SV value and PV value. SV means the set temperature and PV means the current wa water temperature. Normally we set 20 degree. After we set the temperature, we can press this button to start the chiller. Now we can see the water is flowing inside. And also we can see there is green light beside the run and pump, means the chiller is running and working, or the pump is working. The compressor has not started yet, because the, the water inside the chiller is still lower than 20 degrees. And we have the set uh, three degree tolerance, so compressor not started yet. Later, when temperature of water is higher than the uh, set temperature three degree, so compressor will start working. Okay, uh, once we are sure the water chiller is working uh, normally, now we can switch on the power of the furnace. After switch on the furnace, we can see on the screen of furnace, the four groups of parameters. The water temperature means the water inlet temperature from water chiller. This is not adjustable, so no need to set. And the water flow is the water flow between the water chiller and the furnace. As I mentioned, it can show maximum 275 liter per minute. So this one no need to set either. This set power, they, uh, it means the how many power uh, you will need to melt the metal. Today we will try to melt copper. So we set 60%. The more power we set, the faster speed the melting will be. Um, and for the set temperature, here we can set the temperature we need uh, for metal melting. Uh, as, as I mentioned, today we try copper, so we can set temperature 950 degree. Then confirm. Once after the furn uh, furnace start working, here you can see the actual working temperature showing on the left of set temperature. Okay, now we have finished setting of the parameter. Now we can put the crucible into the heating coil. Then we pour the metals. Yeah, we try copper. Uh, okay, now we can press start button to start melting of metal. As I just mentioned, uh, today we try melt uh, copper, so we set the power 60% because during the melting process, copper may generate smoke. If you uh, set gear power higher, for example, 70 or 80 or higher, the melting speed will be sure faster. Okay, now we can get closer to the crucible. We can feel, we can feel the crucible is getting hot. Uh, we can, if we want faster, we can set 
seventy percent. Now we can get closer to the crucible. We can see the crucible is getting hot on the bottom. And slowly, we can see the metal start sinking down, means the metal started melting already inside the crucible. During During the melting process, we can use a stirring rod to mix the liquid. Wow, it's melting, it's melting. Half finished already. Now we can see the smoke. Yeah, we can use a stirring rod to mix the liquid. We need also we need to heat heat the graphite ingot to make sure to reduce the temperature difference uh, between the metal and the graphite ingot. If the ingot mode is too cold and the, the metal temperature too high, so the metal, when we pour the liquid metal into the ingot, it may jump. So we need to preheat the graphite ingot in advance. Now we can set the power a little, little lower because uh, the metal inside, I think it already finished, already finished the melting. Okay, we can wait about 10 seconds. Well, okay, so now we can take out the graphite ingot. Yeah, inside the crucible, the metal is uh, fully melted. Now we can use a stirring rod to mix and to fill if the metal is uh, totally melted. Okay, finished. Okay, now when we are sure the metal is uh, totally finished, we need to press this start button to finish heating first. Then we can use crucible tongue to take out crucible and then pour the molten copper liquid into graphite ingot. So let us wait the copper getting cold. Well, now the operation of this furnace is just so easy. Uh, but we need to make sure even the melting finish, we have to keep the water chiller working for 10 minutes, then switch it off to prevent this furnace from uh, being overheated. Now we have uh, shared with you the advantages and operation of this DSP furnace. Uh, and there are some cautions we have to pay attention to. Okay, let me share with you some cautions. Firstly, we need to make sure there is a hole on the bottom of the ceramic shield uh, because the, the thermocouple goes through this 
bottom hole then touch the graphite crucible to display more accurate temperature. Secondly, uh, after several time use of this uh, graphite crucible, we need to check regularly if there is a hole on the bottom of the graphite crucible. The place where thermal couple touches is easier or faster to get oxidative. So once we find the, the hole is uh, as deep as the uh, thickness of bottom, so we need to replace another one. The third one, also the most important one we have to pay attention to is once we finish the melting, we need to press this dark button again to stop heating first, then we can take out graphite crucible to pour the molten uh, metal. For if not, the furnace will stop heating for protection. Uh, fourth one, it's uh, better to add purified water into the chiller. Uh, and it is suggested to replace or change the water once a time. And on the back of the water chiller, there is a water level. Once we find the water is lower than normal level, we need to add water, just like now. The water is almost uh, lower than the normal level. We need to add water to here, to the middle of the normal level. And uh, the first one, we need to clean the filter regularly. We just need to place this uh, two switch. Then we can take out the filter. Once we find there's some dust on the filter, we need to clean it. After we clean or dry it, then we put it back. Fix it. That's very easy also, right? Uh, followed by the cautions of this DSP furnace and our water chiller, we need to know the consumables of this DSP furnace. The consumables of this furnace are ceram ceramic shield, graphite crucible, thermocouple, and this ceramic flange. I believe we all have become an expert of this furnace because we have learned the advantages operations of this TSP furnace and its consumables as well as how to maintain it. Do you think so? Uh, well, time always flies so fast. It's time to say goodbye. If you still have any doubt about this DSP induction furnace, you can contact us by email info at yihuicasting.com or visit our web page www.yihuicasting.com uh, be Before our spring festival, if you order this DSP furnace, you will get some promotions. And our spring festival holiday will start from January 27th. Thank you, thanks again for your watching Yihui Casting Live Show. See you next time. Bye.